Thank you. Hello, welcome to another top whatever type video. This will be a top five video. And this top five is basically top five ways Marvel can improve their business practices. Yes. All right. Because a lot of people are still getting very frustrated with Marvel. I mean, it's not as much with DC much anymore. People frustrated with it for years over the continuity. Marvel, it's their greediness that's their biggest problem. But here's, here is basically my top five ways that Marvel can improve their business. Number five, slow down on how many titles you release. I mean, you're releasing about, what, close to 70 titles now? I mean, good God. That's like way too much. That's like more than DC puts out. And DC puts out like 49 titles a month. Not 60 or 70 titles. Good God, this is awful. Maybe you could, if you want to keep these titles around, fine. Just stop coming out, pumping out more titles. A lot of people to get used to status quo of having a certain number of titles. Okay? Alright, number four. Stop canceling books that people actually like. Yes, this was a humongous problem last year where certain titles, people like myself, were loving, and yet Marvel just ups and cancels them for no reason, of one of whom I actually found out the reason why the book I canceled. And that book is all new X Factor. Now, I know for a fact that books get canceled low sales. Okay, fine. But this book got canceled for the absolute dumbest reason that Marvel's pointing the blame at for the low sales. And. Marvel's pointing the blame on the character Gambit. Yes, Gambit is the reason why that we don't have all new X Factor now. Apparently, whenever he's on the book, now apparently it's bad luck now to put him on the book. I mean, it used to be where you put Blade on the book and the book just basically flops. I mean, good God. I mean, how in the world do you factor the fact that Gambit is the reason for low sales in certain books? Explain that. I would love as see I would love to hear from Axel Alonso to hear him actually explain how in the world is it that Gambit is the reason why certain books are not selling, especially of whom look at look let's say Gambit's ongoing series, 17 issues it lasted for. Yes, 17 issues. Imagine that it, it's considered the second longest volume of of all his entire ongoing series. I mean, it's longer than the first two volumes, and the previous volume of the series was only 12 issues. There have been five volumes of Gambit. Five volumes. The third volume is the longest, lasting 25 issues. This volume lasted 17 issues. At what point did the book start losing sales? Was it because they killed off a popular character in the book? I don't know. I mean, when I read them in, in, in uh, All New X Factor, I did not see the reason why, how in the world he is factor into the book's low sales. Maybe if you had, I don't know, put a good artist in the book that people probably liked, maybe people would probably buy your damn book in the first place. Alright? Yes, the whole canceling thing is really getting annoying. Especially some good titles. I mean, not only like all new x Factor, you know, people like, like titles like All New Invaders, Elektra, She-Hulk. She-Hulk, I can probably understand because... The artwork, the artist is not very popular. But Electra, all new X Factor, not, not all, all new Invaders, really? I mean, come on, stop canceling books. Basically, people actually like. I mean, critic-wise, I'm sure these books probably got a bunch of critical acclaim, and yet, oh, we can't have we can't have these books being published. Let's just get rid of them. Ugh. That's my honest opinion when it comes to that. All right. Number three is the events. This is by far a lot of people one of their, one of their biggest gripes with Marvel in the last, like, let's say five years. Five, six years tops. People do not like the events. I mean, there are some events that are written really well, like Original Sin, Infinity, somewhat of Secret Wars, and Siege. But come on. You need to slow down. Like, Whatever happened to have maybe one event a year? Look at, let's say, Valiant, for example. Valiant has an event coming up this coming summer, 4001 AD. And it's the only crossover event they have. They have one event per year. Not three, not six, not 12 events per year. That is completely stupid. 
I mean, it's worse in the case of 2010, having 10 events the same year. This year, you have three events. You have Standoff, Civil War II, and Apocalypse Wars. Really? Come on. Just, after, like, after these events are over, just go a break. Go longer than, I don't know, a month. Good God, a month. I mean, it's worth the case of, let's say, uh, about two years ago, where, like, less than one month after the original Sin rap, you had access. Now, that event was mixed at best. It had a weird ending to it. But come on, give people some breathing room. We just had a, a big, humongous event. Very good event written by Jason Aaron and great artwork. But come on, give people some breathing room. Don't give it one month break. Give them, I don't know, six, seven months, maybe a whole year without an event. Just a lot of people to just recover from reading an entire crosser event. Okay? Just stop doing events. Just slow them down. You can have events. Fine. But give people some breathing room and cut down the amount of events you have per year. Because money is the biggest problem some people have. Not everybody can afford every single book that ties into a particular event. I mean, one of the worst cases of this was Secret Invasion. I mean, Marvel OD'd on this event so much. I mean, you had pretty much mostly almost every single ongoing series that was being published at the time be part of this crossover. Plus a bunch of miniseries, a couple one-shots. I mean, good God. I mean, at least the fact in the case of Avengers Standoff, you actually have 16 parts. Not 40. And of course you got Civil War, Civil War 2 coming up. But who knows. Yeah, who knows. Um, number 2. Reduce the price tag on your books. Because even a lot of people nowadays are not buying a lot of your books. Because your price tag is just too high. Charging $3.99 for every single title you come out with Marvel is completely ridiculous. All right? I mean, you could keep maybe a handful of titles at 3.99. I mean, heck, I can list off for you 10 titles you can keep 3.99 and all the rest cut the price tag and you'll still get sales on it. These books basically I can see keeping the 3.99 price tag. Amazing Spider-Man, Extraordinary X-Men, Uncanny X-Men, all new all different Avengers. Guardians of the Galaxy, uh, Invincible Iron Man, The Mighty Thor, and one of the two Captain America books. Doesn't matter which one, either it's Sam Wilson or, or Steve Rogers. My guess is just keep the Steve Rogers one. Keep that one, $3.99. And Totally Awesome Hulk. That is it. You got nine books. Keep those nine books at $3.99. But all the rest of the books, oh, you can probably have Daredevil probably also at $3.99 as well. You can keep those ten titles. At $3.99. But as for all the rest of your titles putting out, cut the price tag. If you cut it to $2.99, still have digital download, fine, you can keep that. But cut the price tag down to $2.99 and you get more money. Cut If you cut a particular price tag, you have a good amount of money coming in. Not keep pumping out $3.99 titles like every single week. It's ridiculous. Cut the price tag. And also... Stop charging number ones four ninety nine dollars a piece. That is ridiculous. Annuals, perfectly fine. Or if it's, let's say, like a 50th issue. Oh, we can't have 50th issue. Which I'll get to. Uh, that'll be time with number one, basically. What was the number I think? But only for really special issues, uh, anniversary issues, you can charge four ninety nine, dollars Not $8.99. $4.99. Special issues or annuals or one-shots. Those are fine charging $4.99 a piece for those. But charging number ones for ongoing series $4.99, that is ridiculous. Completely ridiculous. Cut that price tag down. If you want to charge number one, a brand new number one, and you want to, if you want to charge Red Night 4, fine. But the rest of the issues, charge two ninety nine for it. Come on, just please. Like, DC is charging every single one of those books starting this coming June. Charging two ninety nine a piece. Whatever happened to having your books charging two ninety nine? Oh, we're too greedy. We gotta charge more, 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 more. 
Come on. And my number one thing, and this is actually two things. Okay? First of which is the renumbering. This by far is another one of people's biggest gripes with your company. Actually, it's a few other things, but uh, a minor thing is the the uh, the covers. I mean, they look great. They're great looking covers. But the problem is, is your printers. Basically, where you ship these books out and the ink is not even dry yet. I mean, good God. I mean, some people have this biggest problem with holding a particular one of your comics. I mean, the ink just runs off in their hands and leaves fingerprints on the covers. Good God, that's horrible. DC doesn't have this big of a problem. But yet, okay, can you think of any other company aside from Marvel that has this biggest problem with their printing? And this is a minor issue, not as big as year two, which is part of this big number one. But here's what I suggest doing. Go back to the old printers. For now, figure out what the problem with this printer is. Why in the world that the covers are basically coming up still kind of wet. When they come out, they're supposed to be dry, and yet they're still wet, and they're not dry enough yet. Figure out what the problem is, then fix it, and then, re then release books with that, with that particular type of printer. Okay? The other big problem is the renumbering. This is by far a lot of people's biggest gripe with Marvel, is the constant renumbering. It gets ridiculous. Like, uh, for instance, uh, certain books last year only came out with five issues. And then we launch number one. And these titles are the following. Howard the Duck, Spider-Gwen, Ant-Man. Trying to think what other titles it was. Uh, All New Hawkeye also released five issues before it got launched number one. And that's it. All New Captain America, six issues. Silk, seven. Uh, Unbeatable Squirrel, eight issues. Uh, let's see. Spider-Woman. 10. Uh, Shield only released 12 issues. Amazing Spider-Man Daredevil has only released more than that. They, they released 18 issues. And the, the, the one book that actually reduced the most amount of issues where we launched number one was Miss Marvel. And that lasted 19 issues. Yeah. That's why a lot of the time whenever I review these books that get relaunched number one, I, I just continue referring to them as the previous numbering. Or, oh, shock. Let's refer you by its old numbering. I mean, the most recent book to revert back to its original numbering was Fantastic Four and Uncanny X-Men. Fantastic Four did it for its final four issues of its series before Marvel acts as series. They also did it for Uncanny X-Men as well, having issue 600. Okay, Marvel, revert all your books that just got relaunched number one, restore to the original numbering, people are not scared of it. People are scared of the constant renumbering. This is ridiculous. Completely ridiculous. The fact you keep relaunching certain books number one for no reason. Otherwise, though, you got to keep pumping out number ones. If you want a number one, release a brand spanking new number one. And keep the other book that's already had more than five issues published. Keep going. Whatever happens to the time of having books having... 50, 60, 75, 100, 700 issues. <coughs> Whatever happened to that? Excuse me about that. Whatever happened to that? Hmm? Restore the original numbering for a lot of these older, a lot of these older books. Come on, Marvel, do it, please. A lot of people are getting sick of this renumbering. You need to stop that. And my other really big gripe. A lot of people have right now. Currently, right now. Not just the renumbering. Another big problem. This is tied. This is a three-way tie for this number one. And this big gripe is double shipping. Wow. You have really OD'd on this thing. Releasing about half your titles through double shipping is completely ridiculous. The only titles I personally feel you can still keep the, the double shipping for is Amazing Spider-Man and Deadpool. That is it. These two are the only ones I can feel as though that can that can keep the double shipping. Rest of them? Slow down. I mean, I know for a fact some of the books basically have reserved, re revert, revert back to once a month. Fine. But everything else? 
that is uh, um, being double shipped every month. Cut it down. Come on. It gets ridiculous. I mean, look at Amazing Spider-Man right now. Eight issues published in just, was it, five months? Yeah, in five months, we have eight issues published. Or look at Spider-Man 29. Just, just last week, we had issue seven come out. Seven. I mean, good God. A lot of these books have been not in publishing for too long. And look at Black Knight, for example. You're canceling Black Knight, a good title that probably a lot of people are not buying because you keep double shipping a damn book. Slow down. Stop all double shipping on all your books except for Amazing Spider-Man, Deadpool, and you can probably you can probably do it for Vince Spider-Man because Vince Spider-Man is a good title right now. But those are the only three that I personally feel you can keep double shipping for. But everything else, cut the price, cut the double shipping. Just Release it once a month. I mean, I know some of your titles you are released once a month, but everything else that currently is releasing twice a month, cut it down. Allow your writers to actually get time to develop a good story. I mean, the only title actually just worked for was the Pure Spider-Man. Despite the fact the title was released twice a month, it had a rotating door of artists who actually get the book coming out on time. Okay, if you have that for some of your books, I mean, not like every other issue, not every single issue with artists, just have a certain artist do a particular set of issues and have an artist come and do a this certain set of issues, make sure it's a good artist, and you can keep, you, you can actually have the book be successful. But if you slow it down and give your artist a little bit more time than just two weeks to come out with another damn book, just do it, Okay. All right. Um, just do it, okay? And all right, that's all I gotta see on the matter. I know this is kind of like a rant in the way, along with being a top five, but this top five is necessary. This is just an updated one that really I felt as though was really necessary to do. That kind of is like what eight things. Despite fact being a top five, I decided to combine three into one because this is basically a lot of people's biggest scripts. Another big problem, and this is an honorable mention, I want to put this this honorable mention put in here, is um, some of the books have typos. I am not kidding about this. I mean, I can list off probably some certain books, like like during uh, Spider Verse, for example. Um, Spider Man 2099 had a couple typos. So, I mean, I, I can't think of any other books that probably have typos, but I'm sure other people will probably complain about this too, is the typos. Okay, editors, we look at these books. Look at how these words are typed. If you see a typo, send it back to the letterer, do it over again. Don't ship it out right away, don't ignore that. Look every single letter over. If you see a typo, send it back to get redone. Don't ship it out right away. That's your whole point of being an editor. You're supposed to point out typos. And yet, Marvel, actual Alonzo, if you're here, if you're, if you're watching this video, tell your editors to check the lettering on, certain, on every single book you put out. Because certain people are complaining about the lettering. And also, check your freaking printers. Because people are also complaining not only about the, the, the typos, but people complain about the covers. All right, just look at those printers and talk to the editors and tell them to do the freaking job. All right, because I know the typo thing is not really a big problem right now, but the cover thing really has been a big problem for people in the last like I don't know three years. This has been a really big problem, and yeah, I don't know if Axel, I don't know if you Axel don't actually know know of this little problem, but what you need to do is to take a look at the printers. Check the covers and see if basically now a lot of people can confirm uh, about the whole fingerprint thing. I don't have a book to show this myself, but if you contact any person who buys your comics, buys comics, published by our comics, ask them about the covers and the typos, and they will tell you exactly what I'm telling you. Your book's got typos. Not all of them have this, but some of them do. And the cover thing. Check those things, okay? 
And also, whoever their marketing strategy is, tell them to basically, um, who says, oh, we got we got to double ship every single book and uh, renumber these books on one. Fire that person. Put another person in that, that spot who actually can do a better, better marketing strategy. Because here's the thing. The renumbering thing and uh, double shipping, it's not working at all. It may be working for a couple, two or three books. But uh, if you speak to any person who buys Marvel Comics, they will tell you what I'm saying right now. We have a problem with the events, the renumbering, the double shipping, the covers. Everything I'm saying is completely true. You can speak to anybody on the street who reads Marvel Comics. If you speak to anybody who reads Marvel Comics, they would tell you that the writing and the artwork is good inside the books. But they would tell you they don't like renumbering. They don't like double shipping. They don't like typos, how the covers are presented, basically where the ink runs off on their, on their hands after like 30 minutes of reading the damn book. And they will also tell you they don't like the events. That's why you're losing a lot. That's why you're losing a lot of your readers to independent books and maybe DC. I mean, DC doesn't have this big of a problem, but Marvel does. If you improve on these things, if you fix your problems, people will buy your books. All right. Because, like, the biggest problem people have right now is the price tag, double shipping. Aaron number those three are the really big ones. The minor ones are the cover thing and the in the typos. Those two are the minor problems. But the other three problems, if you ask anybody about that, they will tell you they hate every single one of the problems you have in your company. If you fix these problems, you will have a much better company and you have a lot more cash flow coming through your doors, and you also have more you have your sales will improve if you fix these problems. I mean the events one thing, but these other things to talk about. They need to be fixed as soon as possible because if you don't fix them within the next year or two, you will lose money from your comic publishing. I mean, you will probably get fired, Axel Alonso, if you don't fix this problem. You may. I say may. Because I'm sure Disney probably would notice this too if, in fact, they will show – if they see the sales charts and they see that, they're, that the sales are, getting, are slipping quickly, you will probably lose your job. That's my guess. I don't know. I am not a financial strategist. But I'm saying this as a comic book fan. That really... Now, I love Marvel Comics. I have been reading Marvel Comics for the past 12 years. Since 2004, I have been reading comics since I was... I'm trying to think what I was. I was 16, yes. Ever since I was 16 years old... I have been reading comic books. And I've read a good chunk of the stuff published by Marvel Comics. I mean, yes, I'm recently I'm published by the, a lot of independent companies like DC. Like, I'm reading some, a lot of stuff in DC. And some independent stuff like Valiant, Image, uh, Dark Horse, Dynamite. Stuff like that. I mean, yes, there's Boom Studios, but not really very much from Boom Studios. But I am reading the, that stuff too. But... My home friend that comes reading comic books is Marvel because a lot of my favorite characters are from Marvel. I mean, yes, I love characters posed by DC and all the other companies, but Marvel is the one I've stuck with the longest. I have stuck with this company the longest, longer than any other company, a lot of whom I've only started in the last couple, two or three years at most. DC, I've only been reading this since October 2010. I've been reading DC Comics for almost six years now. Not as long as basically Marvel, but half as long. Everything else I've only been reading in like in the last five years. Okay? But please. If you're watching this, just listen to what I have to say, please. Alright? But uh, that's it for this particular video. Stay tuned for more videos probably similar to my top tens. This is just an updated video of my top ten uh, way, top five ways Marvel can improve Marvel can improve their business practices. I mean, I'm sure a lot of people probably be watching this, but they may agree or disagree with my opinions on how to fix Marvel. If you want to leave your top five things Marvel can improve the business practices with, you can leave in the comments below. Uh, be sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel. But until then, 
see you there. Bye.